about these courtesy of over under and it's regarding the nocta and nike air force one certified lover boy air force ones now i don't personally understand why these took so long to come out because you would imagine part of the reason why you put these shoes together after you name your album certified lover boy which is i feel like oh sorry mixtape whatever it was um i feel like it was one of the greatest titles you can put together for a project because it was essentially it would have been nice if he would have done it uh, if it would have been a quintessential r&b album like super soft super mopey um sort of album or maybe like a celebration of fuck boys and stuff because certified lover boy is amazing because back in the day you know if you were like a little bit of a rico suave type or if you were just mixed race and girls liked you people would sometimes call you lover boy right um uh, whatever it may be so it's a term that i've kind of heard banded around and stuff so it's quite a funny um sort of title to name your album so it would have been nice to sort of have the the air force ones tie in with it because you know air force ones are sort of like the the flipping manolo blanick um of flipping shoes when it comes to guys in terms of upgrading your outfit and making you look like an absolute star it's you know everyone would love a pair of fresh white air force one for a first date with somebody that they really like it's definitely something that you would appeal to but for some reason there was rumors that are put out there that Nike were having some issues in terms of manufacturing this one little key detail in the certified lover boy Air Force Ones that's much different to other Air Force Ones that they put together. Well, maybe two. The first one being that on the side of the midsole where usually you have the air written on the side of the midsole of the Air Force One, they've changed it to say lover, was it not to say uh, love you forever? So I saw a lover boy. And then most importantly, on the back heel tab, on the back heel section of the Air Force One and towards the front of the tip of the Air Force One where there usually are these little star motifs, they've t all these little star uh, bumps all over the place. They've, they've swapped that and made them into hearts. Now, they're not the most easily discernible hearts. They mostly look like triangles with a little bump in them, but they don't really look heart-shaped. They're a little bit weird. Supposedly, these were the really hard things for Nike to manufacture because, you know, I'm assuming they probably had to invent or create an entire new tooling to make that outsole itself especially to make the out maybe not just the outsole itself they had to create an entire new tooling to kind of put that together and if there's one thing you know about nike when it comes to putting more effort into re reimagining or reworking old classics they don't want to do it they're one of the most resting on the laurel brands out there there's a whole library of amazing vintage products that they have in their museum in their archives that they could es essentially bring back from the dead and reverse engineer and put out in the exact specifications of how they came out back in the day maybe with some upgrades and materials and maybe whatever it may be but they don't do it instead they create or put out really crappy um halfway done retros that don't really go anywhere and for the most part that's why they kind of stuck on just with their legacy shoes and shit but there's so many other things that they could pull out from their archive but they don't because they don't want to go through the hassle of retooling shit and i'm only saying it because i was told this many times by people who are in the know like why can't they just make a good standard or good quality air max light retro when it came out why was the air stab look so wonky um why was the structure looking so wonky um why even the air max one before they all the updates they've made now why was it looking so crap for a long time why doesn't the air max 90 look as good as the ones that came out in the 90s or early 2000s and most of the reason why is because they don't have the tooling that they made the molds of those shoes back in the day now they don't have them available and for some reason they don't want to make them again because it's really expensive to make tooling for shoes i guess but if you're a multi-billion dollar company like nike and you're you know and you essentially you know who knows what they make from air force ones alone on a yearly basis how you can't just offset that cost and redo the tooling and then sell it to sneakerheads for an exorbitant price i don't know because i know i'd buy it if they made a air max 90 on air max one big window that was like to spec it was exactly how it did when it came out in 87 and they put that out there and told me it was 250 or 300 or 400 i'd buy it in a heartbeat but they don't they put out half-baked retros and whatever anyway that was a rumor that they put out there and then luckily now it looks like they're counteracting the rumor by saying no it is going to come out with the hearts on it because effectively if it doesn't come out of hearts on it what's the point of putting them out part of the reason why they looked incredible is because essentially they're an all-white air force one classic but they've got this um what you call what do they call this lever again i forgot the name of it um tumble is it tumbled leather i think it's tumbled leather which is a really lush soft plum leather that kind of doesn't really crease up but sort of like soaks into your foot a bit i don't know how to describe it it looks really nice so they've got this really nice leather on the upper 
They've got this great, um, you know, just solid white colour, no off-whites on the midsole or anything. Um, it looks like a leather insole, which I'm not the biggest fan of because sometimes it kind of gets a bit sweaty and slippy in there in general for me personally. It's not something that I've kind of always been down with. But essentially a classic all-white upper, um, no real other extra details included. And they've got the classic little nice added touch of having the Love You Forever written on the side of the midsole and then the heart shapes towards the back and the front of the outsole and then you've got these extra details which i have want no parts of which basically feature um I'm guessing it spells out Drake's name, maybe it says certified lover boy, these little kind of charm things I guess you're meant to put through your laces and whatnot, but that's that's another level of lover boy to have these little dangly things hanging off your laces and whatnot and making sounds as you walk. Definitely not something that I want. But according to Over Under, they're saying that these are meant to come out soon and they're priced at $160 and these are official images so it's looking like these are probably going to end up coming out which I'm a fan of and I'm going to try to get a pair is that mid is that insole am I right in saying that you know it's leather isn't it yes yeah, too shit yeah I don't like it I'm really not a fan of um leather inners or whatnot even the silky ones I think they should just be kept mesher your feet can actually breathe oh and the nice thing addition at the back of the hill tab they've got nike air written on the back of the hill and then they've got here the nocta sign with the three crucifix type um symbols or whatnot wherever they are swords i'm not too sure i wonder what even i don't even know what nocta actually means to be completely honest and the insoles are just pretty plain it's sort of like a baby blue type but that might be his kind of signature color in it that baby blue sort of like sky blue coral type color whatever it may be called but yeah, they look fairly decent, man. I'm a really big fan of them. And they're meant to be coming out soon. The Nocturne Nike Air Force One Low Certified Lover Boys.